Sophia from Notes on the Sewing Room. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world and you're getting ready for Christmas if um, you celebrate Christmas. And um, I actually love Christmas, so I've got my tree up, I've got my decorations up and I don't think I'm really all ready to go, but I'm getting there. <laughs> Today's video is actually about seven different Tilling the Buttons Billy jumpers and dresses that I've got to share with you. So I hope you enjoy watching today. Don't forget if you do, please do press that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've also got a hack to show you. I've turned the pattern into a cardigan, so I hope you enjoy watching. So if you are unfamiliar with it, the Tilling the Buttons Billy jumper and dress can be made obviously as a jumper or a dress. And I've actually also hacked it into a cardigan and I absolutely love this pattern. It's available in both a printed version of the sewing pattern and also available in PDF online, uh, depending on which is your preference. I've actually got the hard copy version because I quite like the Tilly and the Buttons sewing patterns packaging and I quite like to keep them all in my uh, little sewing box uh, of patterns, which is quite nice. Um, but I actually have made all of my versions in a size three for the jumper and for the dress, I've made them in a Tilly and the Buttons size three at the top, which is roughly a UK size 10 and then I've actually graded out to a size 5 at the hip. Now actually uh, what I've done is I've actually taken in the dress quite a lot on the side seams so in actual fact it's probably not a size 5 on the bottom in the end but that's because I've decided that I don't want the amount of ease that's in this pattern. I wanted to make it a little bit more on the fitted side. Um, for me personally I like something that's a little bit more fitted so I've actually put on my dress inside out and I've pinned myself um, for the fit that I wanted, um, not pinned myself, but <laughs> pinned the dress uh, to the fit that I wanted and I've actually marked it with chalk, taken off the dress and then I've sewn it on my sewing machine or on my overlocker to get the desired fit. So that's what I tend to do um, to get the fit that I want. So I'd love to know, of course, how you get the desired fit on your uh, projects. Do you use a mannequin or do you get someone to do the fitting with you? Maybe like a friend or a family member, something like that. Any tips would be most appreciated. So do leave me a message down below. So would you like to see what I've been making in terms of my jumpers and dresses and also my hack? Well, first of all, I'll start off with one of my dresses that I've made. So this is actually a brand new uh, dress that I've made and I made it out of a stretch velvet fabric which I bought from Sew Over It. So here it is, I'm actually going to put on each of these different outfits so you can see what they actually look like on me but also I'll hold them up as well. So this is the first one that I've made. So as you can see it's this gorgeous um, stretch velvet fabric, it's, um, it's got a bit of a shine to it. I think this is really perfect for Christmas time. So I've actually made this with a long sleeve. Now the, the pattern, if you are unfamiliar with it, it's got gathering around the upper sleeve and it's also got gathering around the cuff um, and then obviously you add the cuff on the end. Now I've found with this pattern that the arms do come up a little bit short on me. I don't know if I've got particularly long arms, <laughs> but um, the pattern does seem to be more bracelet length than it is a full length. So I decide to add on just about an inch to the cuff um, just to extend the um, pattern out a little bit and just so I get a full arm coverage <laughs> so I don't get cold in this blustery weather that we've got at the moment. So yeah, this is this is one of the versions. This one I've actually added on the hemband. So um, I think that's probably optional. If you want to add on the hemband, you can, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. Now with the dress versions that I've made, um, with the versions like this one, uh, which has got the hemband on the bottom, what I've done is I have added two inches onto the length of the dress, the main part of the dress, and then I've added on the hemband afterwards. Now I'm quite tall, I'm five foot ten, so this pattern is actually drafted for someone that's more petite than myself. Um, so um, for me, I need to lengthen it a little bit, otherwise I would just feel uncomfortable and it would just be a little bit short. So uh, for me, adding on the two inches um, to the main part of the dress and then adding on the hemband seems to work quite well. Now one of the versions that I've actually made, um, I've not added the hemband on, and in that case, I've actually added about four inches onto um, the length 
of the dress instead. Another change that I've made to this dress is actually to lower the neckline slightly. So on each of my different versions I have actually lowered it in a slightly different way but one of the things that I do is I actually just draw um, a line on the pattern piece so I kind of measure how low I want the neckline to be, I make a, a mark and then I just literally draw a curved line back up to the shoulder. So in this case I've actually lowered the neckline by around two inches um, but on some of my other versions I've actually done something slightly different which we'll see shortly. So as you can see I've got this dress on, I really like this one, I've just been on holiday day with my family and I wanted to make this dress to take away with me because I just thought like I said it's kind of Christmassy a little bit festive and I just thought it would also keep me quite warm because we've got these gorgeous snuggly arms and this is quite a thick ish fabric as well and um, you can probably see my t-shirt underneath I'm really cold today so I'm trying to keep a little bit warm um, but yeah this this is a really gorgeous dress so I'm just gonna scan my camera back a little bit so that you can see and uh, see what the overall fit is like and as I said um, I've um, just kind of brought in the fit on myself a little bit at the side seams as well. So this is what the dress looks like overall. I will put in a picture as well so you can see uh, the full length if you can't quite get that here. You can see it comes to um, just above my knees uh, which is quite a nice one. It's actually the first time that I've ever worked with a stretch velvet. I'm not sure if I enjoyed it particularly because it did kind of move around quite a lot on my sewing machine um, or overlocker should I say. I did uh, make most of this on my overlocker. I tend to do the gathering sections uh, for the upper sleeve and also the cuff on my sewing machine first of all because I find that to be a little bit easier and then I go onto my overlocker just to kind of finish off the edges on the inside and make it look nice and smart. I always think it's interesting to work with a different type of fabric and for me um, you know this this was a new one. Uh, I'm really pleased with the overall result um, although <laughs> I did do a little bit of cursing <laughs> um, during the making process just because I did find it um, a little bit tricky um, but it's um, a really nice finish in the end. Um, do let me know um, if you like this pattern and if you like a particular version of um, the dresses and jumpers that I'm showing you today in the comment section below. Um, I always enjoy hearing from you so any messages you'd like to me leave me would be amazing also um, I'd love to know if you are making anything else at the moment maybe for yourself or a gift for someone for Christmas anything like that I'm always inspired to hear about uh, what you're working on as well so I'll put my next one on so this is the next version that I wanted to share with you so this is actually another dress and I've made this out of a waffle jersey so this is also a different fabric that I've not really used before and um, if I come a little bit closer you'll be able to see the print of it. So this actually came in a So Hayley Jane subscription box um, a few months ago and I was really keen to use it for something that I would get quite a lot of wear out of just because I thought it's quite a nice type of practical type of fabric. I really like the print of it, it's got this kind of ditzy print on there um, and I just thought it would work perfectly for a billy dress. So as you can see I've actually lowered the neckline a little bit more on this version. So I probably lowered this one by about three or four inches um, just to get my desired fit and then of course I've extended the neckband to go on there as well. Um, again I've got the gathered uh, bit at the shoulder and then into the cuff as well. Um, this one um, I would say kind of stretches out a little bit when I'm wearing it um, but I think it's just the type of fabric that it is to be honest but um, it's a lovely dress and it's probably a little bit more on the casual side than the other version that I just showed you. But again, it's a lovely one. Um, I finished this version a few weeks ago and I've worn it out a couple of times, but I think it's gonna be perfect for, you know, going to the office, working from home, just kind of like, you know, doing whatever really. It's quite a nice, um, lovely casual dress that I can layer up with a nice chunky cardigan. So I'll just show you the length of this one and um, see what you think. Please excuse my blue t-shirt underneath here. As I said, I'm just keeping warm today. So as you can see, I've kind of just uh, brought this in slightly just to give myself a little bit more shaping um, at the side seam. Again, I've got the hem band on this one. Um, this one is probably slightly short, I'm not quite sure why, um, but it's um, just above my knees here as well. Um, but I really like this one if I show you the back. I'll probably get more wear out of this one than the red one, I think, but just because of the type of fabric that it is. I'm sure I'm definitely going to make more of dress versions. I've got a couple of completely different dress versions to show you shortly, so stay tuned for that.
Now the nice thing about this pattern is that I think depending on what fabric you actually use, it can look completely different. So I'd like to think that all of my versions do look um, you know, quite different. So um, do let me know what you think, but this is a jumper version. So I've actually made this into a cropped jumper. I love a cropped jumper and a cropped cardigan. So um, I just thought, why not? Let's turn this into a cropped version. So all I did was I looked at the pattern piece and I looked where the waistline actually fell. Then I cut off uh, the pattern at that point and then added on the, um, the waistband just to fit um, the, uh, the length of where it actually Cut off my pattern piece too. Um, so you'll see what I mean. So this is actually um, a French terry fabric which I've got here which is actually a remnant piece. It's beautifully soft, it's got a nice little flower print on it and this light pink background. So I love that as soon as I saw it. I think I got that from Guthrie and Garney perhaps at some point in a remnant bin. So as you can see I've used that for the arms and I've used that for the lovely neck band and also the hem band which we'll see in a second. And then the main part of the body I've actually used a ponty fabric. So again that was left over from another project and I just wanted to use it up um, so I was putting it to good use really. So um, let me scan down so you can see this jumper. So this has actually been made in a size three as I said previously. Um, so let's scan you down so you can see. So as you can see I'm, I'm wearing a, a little denim skirt here which is quite high waisted so and the jumper just fits to the top of my skirt which I think is quite nice. Um, it also means I can layer it up with a thicker cardigan over the top or a jacket and just keep nice and snuggly. So um, I wear quite a lot of things that are high waisted so skirts and whatnot so um, I, I also think this would look quite nice over a dress or maybe some high-waisted trousers. Um, so yes, this is the next version that I wanted to share with you. I hope you like it. The next version that I wanted to share with you is actually a hack. So this is a cardigan, as you can see. So um, this is made out of a ponty fabric as well. It's got a kind of animal type print on there, if you can see that. And I bought this from a shop called Sally Twinkles. Um, you can find them online. I think they're on Facebook as well. Um, so all I did was for this one, I used the Tilling the Buttons Billy jumper pattern. So I used it to the, the full uh, length of the jumper pattern. I didn't make this one cropped. And then I actually used the shaping and the neckband from the Tilling the Buttons Bertha cardigan. I kind of merged the two together. So I think it's actually worked quite nicely. So I've kept all of the other details. We've still got the nice gathering into the sleeve. This version is actually a little bit shorter on the arm um, because when I made this one, I didn't really realize that I needed to extend the arm piece or the cuff uh, or something like that. So it, it is a little bit more bracelet length, but I don't really mind to be honest. Um, but this is a lovely one that can be worn with so many different things. I think it's because of the colourway of the fabric. It just goes with so many different bits and pieces in my um, handmade wardrobe, really. So let me scan you down so you can see the overall length. I would definitely like to have a go at doing another hack, perhaps, of this um, pattern. Um, I think that the cardigan you know, it's a really good piece to make. So I would definitely recommend you giving the cardigan a go if you were thinking about doing some sort of hack for this pattern. Um, let me just scan you down. So as you can see, this one is more like hip length, I suppose. Um, you can see the back. I quite like the fit at the back. It's not too loose, not too tight either. And I just really like these sleeves. On, on each of the versions that I've made, the sleeves are a real highlight for me, to be honest. Um, but yeah, this one just goes with lots of different things, can be dressed up or dressed down. Um, I think I made pretty much most of this again on my overlocker, just apart from the gathering bits. If you've had a go at doing a hack of the Billy pattern, I'd love to know what you did. So again, just leave me a message down below if you'd like to. Here is my next version. So this is another cropped jumper version. So this one is actually made out of quite a soft sweatshirt type fabric, which I bought from Higgs and Higgs a while ago. So this is actually the first version of the pattern that I tried. As you can see, I've got the original neckband on here. So for me, the height of this uh, neckline is a little bit too much. I don't like things that are too high around my neck. Um, so that's why I've actually lowered the neckline in the, the other versions that I've actually made. Um, again, um, this one has got more of a, a bracelet 
um, length on the sleeve. Um, I think I must have done this on first, I did the cardigan and just kind of forgot about the sleeves, I'm not sure. Um, but this one is a lovely length, it's a beautiful jumper this one, just because the, the fabric is so soft on the outside and really snuggly and warm on the inside as well. So um, if you follow me on Instagram or you know, you're know you a regular YouTube viewer, um, you'll probably know that I've actually uh, got this fabric in a couple of other colourways as well, which I've made other things out of. Um, so that kind of shows you that I'm a big fan of this fabric. Um, but yes, I, this is probably one of my favourite of my Billy collection. Um, but let me just scan you down so you can see what this one's like overall. Again, I'm wearing it with a high-waisted skirt, um, which I think works quite nicely for me. But again, it would look, look great with jeans or um, again, over a dress or something. As you can see, so this is what it looks like full length. I've turned around so you can see the back. But yeah, it's, um, it's a lovely pattern, this one. Definitely one of Tilly's um, great patterns. I, I love so many of Tilly's patterns, to be honest. Um, I love the Agnes top, I love the Coco top and dress. Um, yeah, lots of different ones, but this is definitely right up there with one of my favourites at the moment. So this is actually another dress that I've made, but this one that you can see, I've actually got the original uh, shoulder piece, which has uh, got the gathering, but then I've actually just shortened the sleeve on this one. And instead of adding on a cuff, I've actually inserted some elastic just around, um, just above, uh, above my um, elbow area actually and the reason that I inserted the elastic was because basically I didn't have enough fabric to make this a full length sleeve so this version is actually a ponty made in a ponty fabric uh, which I got from Minerva which has got this gorgeous print on it here um, it's a lovely lovely dress and um, this version I've actually not added the hemband onto so I've actually increased the length of the dress piece by four inches so I'll just scan you down so you can see what it looks like full length and um, this one I feel like is a little bit smarter than my other ones and um, I do tend to wear it um, into the office and that kind of thing it looks quite nice with a blazer over the top or more of a smart cardigan um, but yeah this one this one's a real hit for me it's the first version of the dresses that I made and um, yeah, it just kind of got me sold on the pattern, I think, in terms of it being a dress. So as you can see, this one again, I've got a similar fit to the other ones, um, but it's actually, um, I've literally just top stitched it around the hemline there. I've actually done a, a twin needle stitch all around the hem. Um, but I'm actually pleased with how this one worked out, really. It just shows that you can play around with the pattern and it can look completely different in different types of fabrics and also um, by just changing the sleeves a little bit or changing the hem and it can look like you've got a completely different outfit. I've got one more dress to show you so stay tuned and you'll see that one and um, it's got a completely different neckline to all of other versions. So the final dress that I wanted to share with you today is actually this one. So as you can see this one has got a completely different neckline on the front and back of the dress to the other ones that I've showed you. So this one is made from, I think it was actually described as a ponty fabric from Minerva, uh, but it's a little bit different from any ponty that I've actually used before. And that's because it's got a sort of, if you can see the uh, inside of it, it's almost got like little dots on the inside of the fabric. Um, so it's almost a little bit more breathable, I suppose, I'm not sure. Um, but yes, it's kind of this blue, pink, um, black colour on the outside of the fabric and then it's actually white on the inside of the fabric. Now one thing that I would say about this particular fabric is if it's stretched too much you can see um, the white on the inside of the fabric but that's okay because um, this dress doesn't need to stretch too much to actually go on, go on over my head and you know it doesn't stretch too much really when I'm wearing it. Um, the stretch just obviously is needed for the garment but it adds to a little bit of extra comfort I suppose when you're wearing it as well. Um, so I'm going to slip this one in a, on in a second so you can actually see that gorgeous neckline. Now to achieve the neckline on this one, um, I actually just cut into the fabric, um, I kind of drew down from my neckline uh, down to actually where I wanted the deepest part of the um, half moon shape I suppose to actually be, or the boat neckline. So say to uh, the heart that I'm just pointing to on my uh, jumper that I'm wearing at the moment. Um, and then I drew up to um, the shoulder points and basically just kind of drew around that kind of shape, if that makes sense. And I did that on the front and back of the fabric to achieve um, that neckline there. And then I extended the neckband, of course, as well, so it fitted all the way around the boat neckline. So I like this one because it is completely different. And as I said, I think if you use different types of fabric and you change little details like the neckline or the sleeves or the length, 
or adding a hemband or not adding a hemband, the garment can look so different. Um, I've worn this one quite a lot of time since I've actually made it um, and I've worn it to work and I've worn it just kind of out and about with trainers, which I think looks quite nice as well. I, I tend to wear trainers with most things, I'll be honest. Um, I do like my comfort, <laughs> um, but um, you could wear it with heels and whatnot as well and it would look really stylish, I think. So this one has actually got the hemband around the bottom of the garment. Um, it's a similar length to the other ones that I've made. Um, the main difference is just the, the changing up of, of the neckline. So let me slip it on and then you can see what it looks like. So here it is. This is my neck dress that I want to show you. So um, my hair looks a bit crazy actually because I keep taking off and putting on things. Um, but as you can see, I've actually got my blue t-shirt on still underneath. Uh, but you can see that this is actually quite a sweeping neckline there, which is a little bit different and quite pretty, I think. If I show you the back, you can see how deep the back is as well. Um, it's a lovely dress. Um, I highly recommend, as I said, trying this pattern and just change up a few little details to uh, make it look quite different. Um, let me scan down and then you can see what the dress looks like overall on me. Uh, this uh, fabric uh, was given to me for free uh, by Minerva as part of their brand ambassador programme. So you can probably see there again, this one comes to um, just around my knee area, which is quite nice. And I think it looks quite nice having that hemband on there as well. Um, it's a lovely dress. Um, really like this one. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing all of the different outfits I've had to show you today and enjoying seeing my um, and you've enjoyed seeing my whole collection of uh, the turning the buttons Billy pattern that I've made. If you've made it, as I said, I'd love to know how you found the pattern, what kind of fabric you used, if you made any changes or not. And I'd love to know what you're working on at the moment in terms of your sewing projects. So do leave me any messages you'd like to down below. Um, if you have enjoyed watching today's video, I would love it if you could press that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, any kind of engagement with the likes and the comments and whatnot, it really does help my channel um, to be, um, you know, um, noted to other people on YouTube. It kind of just lets YouTube know that, um, you know, you're enjoying the videos, so maybe other people that like sewing would enjoy it as well. But thank you very much to everyone who visits my channel week after week. I really do appreciate it. I've got lots of great content coming up on my channel soon so if you haven't already do press that notification bell and then you won't miss any of my future content but until next time I'll leave it there thanks for joining me today and I'll see you again soon bye